dulu adalah very stiff but rather than use bristle the antenna we we, we use just uh, at the arista is a uh, plumos or with zite and then body with bristles okay rather than say body is hairy yani we call it as bristles but it's very erect and strong kamu nampak dia macam keras kan uh, so we say it uh, bristle okay body with bristle we highly yeah. Maksudnya dia transparent Okay And then body dia stop Instead of uh, Dia nampak macam gemuk je kan Okay you can uh, Say other thing as well Apa lagi Yang kat sini You can say Other things Black stripe Okay, they have black stripe, kan? They cut thorax, right? Okay, yes. You can see that. But sometimes, okay, there are um, there are uh, another family which have totally uh, uh, very, how to say, they are the tiga stripe yang, yang ni kamu nampak dia macam ada empat, right? Uh, that family sarcophagi dia if I'm not mistaken dia punya karakteristik yang stripe ni is very obvious compared to musidae okay, yang tu memang lagi uh, obvious and the size is also very big lah compared to this musidae ni adalah lalat rumah biasa yang kamu tengok tu but for sarcophagi dia is a bit larger okay, and then the stripe is very obvious other than that apa lagi yang kamu boleh cakap pasal musidae one pair of wing. Sorry? One pair of wing. Yes, one pair of wing. Since it's dipterans, kan? So they have one pair of wings. Compared to hymenopterans, they have uh, two pairs of wings. So this one, one pair of wings. Then you can add it uh, for the characteristic that uh, the hind wing is modified into what? Haltiers. Yes, haltiers. Uh, so you can see that as well. Okay? for the identification of musidae since it's, it's, it's deterrence. Other than that, apa lagi yang boleh cakap? Uh, kalau red compound eye? Uh, okay, red compound eyes. Uh, in the picture, yes. It's, it's red, right? Uh, um, sebab, uh, I'm not sure whether we can say uh, Sometimes, okay, sometimes it's actually not fully red. Okay, it's depend on the uh, the how to say uh, the the light, the source of light. Kadang kan kamu boleh nampak dia a bit macam greenish rather than red. So, but from this picture, of course, um, kita nampak obviously dia merah lah, right? Uh, but but somehow. Uh, sebab you you can imagine dia macam uh, mata dia ni kan uh, dia, uh, dia dia seolah-olah macam banyak-banyak screen kan remember i said dia macam banyak-banyak screen computer atau screen tv yang kamu tengok different angle okay so different light uh, biasan cahaya tu okay biasa cahaya dah pergi fizik dah pula kan dia boleh jadi dia boleh tukar instead of color merah mungkin kamu nampak different color because of the source of light uh, so selalunya uh, mata for muska domestica we rarely use red eyes tapi certain um, uh, certain family like drosophila remember uh, I'm I don't know whether you familiar with it kalau siapa yang belajar genetik ataupun ada basic genetik they they use drosophila yang uh, lalat halus kecil tu kan lalat buah but in the small the small one tu uh, for study genetic and there is a characteristic dekat mata and you can say that satu group it has red eyes another group has uh, like a black not not fully black but different eyes color maksudnya bukan bukan uh, merah so you can use that kind 
of color in that situation sebab dia memang obviously ada dua group but for most today uh, usually we rarely use uh, colors untuk describe mata but you can say dia punya shape kan shape dia mungkin diambil uh, separuh daripada uh, uh, apa bahagian mata ke atau kepala dia tu mungkin hemispherical ke kan uh, and then um, dia punya there is a white gap ataupun white space between right and left eyes kamu nampak mata kat sini kan uh, you you can say that kind of characteristic rather than use okay dia punya mata adalah merah because uh, selalunya uh, mata ni sebab color effect from the light so we really use color for the eyes lah okay uh, so uh, what other things boleh cakap selain daripada mata mungkin kepala hemispherical what other thing you think you can see maksudnya mungkin lah gambar ni tak tunjuk but you you can imagine that okay benda tu you nampak but from this picture mungkin tak berapa nak clear what other things what other characteristic that you think it's possible to be seen lapping nampak Yes, kan tadi saya sebut kan lapping mouth part. Yes, you can say that that is the characteristic of the musidae. They have lapping mouth part. Sebab untuk lap liquid kan. Okay, ada? Then lapping mouth part? Tak ada image dah. What other things? Okay, here in the picture you cannot see very clear lah kan. But uh, from the sample, if you observe under the microscope, you actually can see the punya ocelli. They have ocelli here. Okay, between the uh, uh, apa? between the compound eyes ada kat atas ni somewhere okay so tu adalah mainly characteristic for the musidae okay now uh, we already seen uh, dalam kelas tefri today okay fruit fly kan tadi kita ada batosera ingat uh, karambole papaya what other batosera we have kan okay so uh, what are the, what is the characteristic other than they have colored and pattern bodies? Okay, nampak kan? Ada hitam, orange and then uh, uh, apa? Dekat dia punya uh, uh, thorax as well as dekat dia punya abdomen and then uh, okay, here uh, you cannot see in this picture okay, they have some of it have has pattern wing. Maksudnya dekat wing ni instead of fully transparent, sometimes ada yang ada corak. Ada ada dot, sometimes ada yang mungkin uh, uh, corak dia is different lah. Cumanya uh, in this group, uh, some of it has a various uh, pattern wing. Okay. So maksudnya dia bukan just transparent but from the picture of course you only see the transparent part je lah. Okay, uh, and then they have, okay, here you, you also cannot see sebab gambar ni but sometimes you can see they have oviscape. Okay, every oviscape is actually ovipositor. Okay, uh, for female, you can see dia punya sebenarnya bentuk body dia kat sini tak nampak, tak nampak from the feature but they have oviscape for female. Oviscape ni adalah ovipositor but instead of ovipositor to uh, macam terkeluar you can you can see clearly it's actually half embedded maksudnya macam ke dalam bila dia nak oviposit baru benda tu terkeluar okay so oviscape ni uh, we can say it's a retract ovipositor okay bila dia nak lay eggs okay you you can see dia punya ovipositor terkeluar but 
then kalau dia tak nak uh, lay eggs, you can see only just, um, just half part of the ovipositor. So we call it as a oviscate. And then head, okay, head dia sebenarnya is a hemispherical, separuh, uh, you can say it's a, a more like separuh bulat. And then they have short claw, okay, uh, uh, and then claw with pet, or we call it puvili. Okay, here I put it, uh, the picture below, yang saya nak tunjuk yang dia punya kaki, which, which actually with uh, pet or we call it puvili here tadi, okay. So, gambar yang kat bawah ni, dia sebenarnya menolong uh, this structure is actually help uh, uh, insects or this insect to stay on the surface. Maksudnya dia boleh melekat, not actually uh, di, uh, attach strongly, cumanya instead of jatuh dia macam mood mudah terlekat dekat surface lah. Maksudnya dia membantu dia melekat dekat certain uh, permukaan. So this is what we call it claw with pad. So they have claw here. Ada dua sepasang and then this is the pad untuk melekat dekat surface. Okay so we call it claw with pad. And then uh, what other things you can say about this insect? Anyone? Yeah, they constricted. Jambis. Sorry? Macam dia constricted. Constrict. But then dia macam dia constricted. Uh, yes. Uh, it show a bit constrict between uh, abdomen and then uh, thorax. Okay, you can see, you can say that uh, it's clearly uh, nampak lah dia punya constrict tu kan. Compared to this one, it's actually constrict. Cumanya, uh, you may not realize sebab dia under uh, dekat bawah uh, apa? dia punya sayap. Okay, but this one is obviously boleh nampak dia punya constrict. And then you can see the haltier as well here. Kan, nampak haltier here. See the balancing organ. And what other thing you can say you see in the picture? Ocelai, ocelai dah sebut eh? Yes, no, not yet. They have ocelai here, obviously, right? Ada tiga here. Ocelai. Okay, this one, this one and this one. And they have very large compound eyes juga compared to the whole head. Kan, seluruh kepala ni kamu nampak dia seolah-olah more than half of the head here is actually uh, eyes. Okay, kecuali bawah mulut, bawah kat sana ada mouth part dia lah. Cuma from above, as you can see here, it's actually covered more than half of the head. Okay, so other things? Apa lagi yang Atas ocelai tu, ocelai juga tu. Uh, no, it's actually, it's more like, a, a, how to say, eh? dia bukan stump or something but it's, it's somehow, it, dia macam structure seolah-olah macam timbul. So dia macam tunggul but not tunggul of something, bukan tunggul antena ke whatsoever, dia just muncul. Uh, there, there is a name for that sebenarnya but I forgot. Um, but not all the... Uh, I'll say flies under this kind of uh, part. So, dia bukan horn. It's not a horn. Cumanya dia, uh, you, you can imagine that uh, I, can, I can remember apa benda dia punya nama but dia seolah-olah macam bajing. Macam uh, katalah dia punya uh, surface. Kamu, kamu imagine dia, dia seolah-olah macam tunggul lah but it's not the tunggul of something. Kamu tahu tunggul kalau kamu kerap pokok, dia tinggal batang macam tu kan. But this one is actually, uh, how to say, uh, dia punya bentuk tu 
kepala dia tu tiba-tiba satu part tu dia macam bajing macam timbul dari uh, other surface. This one. So yang tiga ni adalah dia punya ocelli but this one is not. This is not the ocelli. There, there is a characteristic which is I forgot uh, apa benda. Okay. Uh, what other things? Boleh cakap. Dia ada antena ke? Of course dia ada antena. <laughs> This <laughs> one as you can see here is actually antena. Oh yang ujung tu eh? Ah yes. This one. Yang ni kan bulut. I know. This one is antena. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Like like I said previously, uh, the antenna is actually aristate. Okay. Cuma nya aristate tu ada macam-macam bentuk. Dia punya arista is totally uh, varied. Maksudnya ada yang arista the uh, with with uh, hairs, ada yang with uh, uh, ada yang bears, ada yang mungkin a bit memanjang. So it's totally uh, uh, different based on different species uh, or different family. But it's actually aristate. Dia punya type of antenna here. This is antenna cuma nya kamu nampak ni yang satu rambut ni pun adalah ciri uh, aristate. Kalau kamu tengok balik your lecture note. Okay, cumanya ada part yang uh, 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 they have modification to to determine uh, different family as well. Okay, other than that, apa lagi yang nampak? What other things you can see? Ball head. Hmm? Sorry? Ball head. Head. Head? What, what about the head? Small than him. Uh, small. So if 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 we compare it small than thorax, it, it's not actually It's not actually quite small lah maksudnya but of course uh, based on picture you can see it's small. Cumanya uh, when we make, uh, when we want to say a distinction between size, uh, it's not actually small, it's not actually small compared to the the size of the thorax. Okay, of course lah kamu nampak ni small. Memang obviously dia a bit kecil tapi bila kita compare with uh, the size of the thorax, we cannot say that the head is actually small. It's actually quite large juga. Okay. So the size of the head, uh, maybe you cannot say quite uh, small atau tak, no. I don't think we can say that. Okay, remember tadi Musca Domestica, they have bristle on the body, right? Okay, that one also some uh, characteristic of the deterrence, which where main majority of deterrence, which is calitric Uh, flies. Okay, ni bukan kita tak bercakap pasal nyamuk tau. Nyamuk also diktera which is uh, nematosera. They have different uh, suborder, right? But for the calyps rate, usually, usually they have bristle on the, the punya part of the body, especially on the thorax lah. Okay, as you can see, I'm not sure whether you can see here, but other uh, bristle here as well. Okay, dekat dia punya thorax. Okay, so now we move to other things. Okay, Kurisidae, that's it. Diptera, also Diptera, but Nematocera, which is uh, the one, the group yang the punya body is very fragile. Okay, so Kurisidae, first thing first, you can say, okay, body is fragile. Of course, tu pun characteristic dia jugalah. But they have long pro proboscis, which is the mouth part. Okay, and the, the body also have scale. Okay, scale here, scale kamu imagine dia adalah macam sisi ikan atau sisi uh, dekat rama-rama. So it actually can fall off from the body. Okay, dia bukannya melekat. Dia, dia, dia melekat di body. Cuma ni bila katalah kamu uh, do something, sapu ke whatsoever, dia boleh tertanggal. That one we call it as a scale. It's type of, it's actually originate or type of hairs as well. Cuma ni dia membesar seolah-olah jadi macam skill macam sisi ikan. Okay. 
Remain, re, tapi jangan pula imagine bentuk dia sama macam ikan, no. Uh, but skill in, in a sense macam tu lah. Dia boleh tertanggal from the uh, body part. Okay. And then uh, Okay. Here the skill not only presence on the body but also presence on the wing vein. Wing vein punya venation of the wing. Wing dia terlipat kat atas ni. Okay. You cannot see the wing. But even on the venation, maksudnya jalur urat uh, urat dekat uh, sayap tu. So on the wing vein pun ada skill. Not only on the body. Okay and then female have short maxillary pulp with short hairs on the antenna. Okay focusing pulp tadi dekat mulut. Okay, since uh, you cannot say dia punya maxillary pulp uh, clearly sebab kita just nampak dia punya proboscis sahaja. But for the antenna, okay, they have a, a what we call it short hair on the antenna. Okay, remember the antenna of the mouth, uh, of the, sorry, of the mosquito is actually what? Apa benda jenis uh, antena for mosquito? Tak ingat dah? Plumos. Yes, plumos. So the antenna type is actually plumos. But for the male, you can see it's obviously plumos. So maksudnya kamu boleh nampak dia punya hairs here is very dense. Okay, nampak jelas lah dia tu plumos. But for the female, okay, they have only a short hairs dekat antena ni. Maksudnya it's not very obviously plumos. It's, but of course it's plumos. Cuma it's not very obvious because the hair is very short. Okay, compare to the one that we can found in the male. Okay, yang male memang obviously antena is strongly plumos. And uh, for adult mosquito, as you can see here, okay, uh, dia punya back or dia punya thorax, okay here, we we can say is ham back. Maksudnya dia macam melengkung atau kita panggil dia macam bongkok, okay. Dekat part of the thorax here, ham back thorax. Okay, ham back ni macam bongkok lah. Okay, this part of the uh, thorax. So other things yang you can say about this uh, uh, nyamuk. What other things? Mouth part. Uh, mouth part. What what you you want to see about the mouth part? Elongated sucking. Yeah, yeah, for sucking, yes, of course, and elongated because we call it uh this one long pro proboscis. So long proboscis actually refers to the mouth part. We call it uh, rather than big. Okay, tadi dekat uh, beetle, dekat vivo we call it big kan. Uh, and then dekat hemipterans also we call it big. But for uh, uh, mosquito as well as the uh, uh, butterfly, usually butterfly, we call it proboscis. Okay, because it's more like a shape this or a more like a straw. Okay, rather than big, it's more like a, a straw. Macam straw, kamu cucuk masuk and then sedut kan. Dia seolah-olah a shape like that. So we call it proboscis. Yes, um, yes uh, the punya mouth part is for sucking. And then what other things you can say? Um, kalau badan ada pupuk putih tu. Ya, yeah, pattern on the scale juga mempengaruhi lah. Maksudnya tumpuk putih ni is actually a scale. Okay, scale yang saya kata dekat badan tadi. So, dia boleh tanggal lah, right? Um, it's more like macam hairs uh, but different shape of hairs. We call it scale. Macam sisik, okay? And then this one is uh, determine the uh, species juga. Maksudnya patterns on the body because of the scale tadi. Pattern on or color on the scale. Yes, you can use it to determine uh, the, the species as well as uh, the genus as well as the species. So uh, here, 
you can uh, say that as well lah. It's, still, it's still about scale. Cuma ni scale dia with patterns kan. Kamu nampak ada putih-putih ni but not because not all have uh, nyamuk. We have different type of nyamuk kan. So uh, have the similar type of uh, similar patterns on the body. So it's totally different. Okay other than that. Kalau cakap uh, abdomen dia expand? Abdomen abdomen uh, dia boleh expand. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, in a sense, true because it's fit on the uh, blood, blood kan? Uh, and it's obvious kalau dia tak makan, dia punya abdomen tu seolah-olah macam tirus je. But when they are fully fit, dia punya abdomen akan expand. So you may may uh, describe it uh, that way rather than just cakap abdomen dia expand. Okay, mungkin boleh cerita. Okay, if you, if uh, they do not fit, dia punya abdomen more like a slender. But then when they fully fit, dia punya abdomen become enlarged or expand uh, after the fit uh, on the blood. You, you may explain it that way lah. Maksudnya rather than just Said, okay, the punya abdomen can expand. Nanti orang imagine expand ke mana. Okay, uh, so uh, that's how also uh, you can describe it. Other than that, apa lagi agak-agak yang you can see here? Land the leg. Leg. Hmm? Sorry? Leg. Leg. Slender. Okay, yes, they have slender legs. And uh, the, on the body, they also sitae. Uh, okay, rather than bristle, it's more like a sitae or hairs okay, uh, on the thorax. Okay, uh, as well uh, as well on the bodies juga lah. They are the bubulu. Other than scale, they have uh, hairs as well. And then you can also say that they punya eyes. Okay, yang ni kamu nampak je sebelah je. But if you uh, see uh, on other picture on the internet, dia punya mata uh, kumpuan or compound eyes is very large. Okay, uh, if we calculate ataupun if we consider the whole head. Dia punya mata tu sahaja dah memang besar for this uh, group of kulisidae. Okay, so that's how we can describe the kulisidae. Compared to other dipterans, their body is very fragile. And also small in size compared to your, your uh, apa, uh, housefly, musca domestica. And nyamuk, very small, right? Okay, now we have hesperate. Okay, or oh, oh, kita dah pukul lebih pukul lima. But anyway, kita nak habis dah. This is, uh, I think, the second last order. Okay, we have hesperate. Okay, um, this is consider a, a lush moth. Okay, Med medium to lush moth. They have a hairy body and also when we are talking about Lepidopterans, adult also have scale. Remember body dia ada penuh dengan scale and also berbulu hairy. And here, okay, compared to other type or, or other family of Lepidopterans, they have very large head. Okay, compared to other Lepidopterans. Later, you, you will see other Lepidopterans but here, as you can see, the punya kepala almost as wide as the thorax. So it has a very large head, a large uh, head. Okay, and then um, the most important things is that okay, uh, as you can see, this is the antenna. Okay, antenna is actually more like a, a filiform, but at the end of the filiform part, they have club. Okay where the club instead of uh, uh, we can say that the club tu is just a ordinary club yang bentuk bulat je is more actually look like hook okay macam cangkuk or curve okay, uh, yang above ni tak nampak sangat but yang below antena yang kat bawah ni you can see dia punya bentuk so it's more like macam cangkuk and at the end of or the tip of uh, antenna ni very uh, halus lah dia macam 
you can imagine dia punya club ni besar kat sini and then hujung, paling hujung ad, halus and then bercangkuk atau curve. Okay, so this is the characteristic for hesperid. Memang tak ada uh, apa, uh, lain moth yang ada antena macam ni. Ada yang jenis macam at the end besar atau bentuk club sahaja but not cangkuk atau not curve. But curve is actually characteristic for hesperid. And then, other than that, if you realize, okay, this is the, actually, uh, the the way dia stay atau kedudukan dia bila uh, we consider it as at rest. Okay, so rather than horizontal or other, rather than vertical, their wings, actually wing, a uh, fore and hind wing, actually located at different angle. Okay, kamu nampak kan yang ni uh, wing ni ke atas dia macam bentuk V kalau kamu tengok betul-betul dari uh, above. Okay, but uh, the hind wing pula duduk seolah-olah so horizontal. So, their wing, all the four wing is actually uh, located at different angle. So, tu adalah also characteristic of hesperid. Kalau butterfly, you can see that Uh, uh, some of the butterfly they do horizontal more of, more, more for, most of it do horizontal then ada yang duduk macam uh, vertical duduk tegak uh, ada juga macam tu lah but uh, most of it adalah horizontal but for this one dia duduk at different angle and then the color for hesperid usually brown memang color macam ni uh, it's not Uh, dia bukan bentuk warna-warni, no. Okay, the, there is a patch or patterns uh, on the four wing. This is four wing. Okay. But uh, most of it, color dia almost similar like ni. Brown and patch ni mungkin a bit orange. Okay, this is the characteristic of this uh, 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 this hesperid or hesperidae. Okay, skipper. And then uh, what else we can say? Okay, the, the mouth part. Okay, remember I said they have proboscis where mouth part is like a straw, kan? Coil, straw. Imagine dia bentuk coil. Coil macam coil buat nyamuk tu. Okay, cumanya uh, bila dia nak guna, bila nak sedut something, nanti coil dia tu akan straight, straighten lah rather than coil. Bentuk coil tu dah. Okay, so tu adalah mouth part for this uh, hesperid. Okay, and then uh, uh, you can say that uh, fore wing and hind wing is actually very broad. Okay, uh, yang ni tak nampak sangat sebab tak buka but if you uh, open up the wing, it's actually consider very broad compared to the one that uh, hymenoptera atau diptera ada. For this lepidoptera, they have broad wing for both fore and hind wing. Okay, so two also uh, can use as a characteristic and some of the species has spur uh, at the end of tibia but this one uh, we cannot see clearly. Okay, not, 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 maybe it's not uh, the main characteristic for the aspirit, uh, for the spur. Okay, so uh, here is the Hesperidae and then we have here this one, another one, Papillonid. Okay, we usually call it a swallow, swallow tail, okay, because of the, this one, the hind tail, the hind wing with tails. This is the characteristic for Papillonid. Okay, but there are also group of Papillonid yang, uh, lacking this type of uh, tails on the hind wing. But most of it, majority have this type of uh, hind wing. Okay, the tail on the hind wing, or we call it as well tails because of this characteristic. And the patterns on the venation or on patterns on the, the uh, wing also are unique. So, uh, it depend on the species. Yang ni kamu tengok bentuk dia macam ni. Sometimes ada yang kat tepi-tepi je dot dot dot. So, the patterns itself is actually described 
the characteristic of the papillonid. And then, um, okay, they have fully function and fully developed follicles of both sets. Oh, maksudnya jantan betina, dua-dua ada kaki hadapan yang sama size dengan kaki tengah dan kaki belakang. Okay, if you look at this picture, this one is not very much clear lah. Okay, uh, but for this Hesperid, this, they also have um, uh, what we call it, uh, legs yang almost sama size like others. Cuma maybe a bit uh, smaller. But compared to other butterfly, tadi kita cakap pasal moss kan, Hesperid tu is moss. But compared to other butterfly, there is a butterfly yang four legs dia ni, dia ada legs, okay. The function is uh, similar, cuma ni a bit reduced in size. Dia macam jadi pendek sikit compared to middle and hind leg. But for Papilio ni, all the three pairs of leg usually similar in size. Maksudnya kamu nampak dia punya kaki tu slender ketiga-tiga. Uh, ketiga-tiga pairs. So that's why one of the characteristics is that fully developed and functioning for legs for both sets. Sebab ada yang very uh, a bit reduced. Okay, like uh, the antenna here. You can say that antenna juga uh, filiform but at the end it's uh, form a, a, how to say, a club. But now the club dia bukan bercangkuk like hesperid. Dia just a normal club. It's just a bit besar at the end or at the tip of the antenna. And if you look at the the uh, head, okay, compared to the hesperid, we consider it, uh, the head is actually quite small. Okay, even though the punya thorax also small, but the body is actually quite large. Okay, so the head we can consider it as the uh, small size compared to the aspirate, this one. They have a, sebab ni kamu tengok dari sisi, but if you look at uh, from above, it's actually quite large, the head compared to this one. Okay, so this is the characteristic of uh, the papionid. And uh, venation, okay, the type of venation, juga menentukan uh, uh, either dia ni adalah papioni ataupun dia ni adalah other type uh, other families of uh, lep, uh, of lepidopterans or uh, butterfly ni tak sama tau so, dia punya wing venation on the wing okay as you can see here this is venation of the wing but for this butterfly you can say that the dia punya colors uh, black with the punya dot uh, white kan and then there are part of colorful here at the end uh, not at the end uh, which is on the high wing tu pun juga boleh jadi ciri menentukan uh, species of this uh, papionid and then both fore wing and high wing is very broad and to the characteristic dia very broad and ni besar kalau kamu buka dia memang besar and then both adalah membranous even though covered with scale so dia tak transparent but it's actually membranous and usually uh, the body or the even the uh, wing also very fragile dia macam mudah patah and scale dia easy to uh, tercabut kan sometimes uh, you, you will see that um, macam pattern ni, some part of the pattern dah hilang. Not because of the uh, different species, it's just that uh, dia punya scale is actually tertanggal daripada dia punya sayap. Because the color of the scale is actually yang menentukan pattern on the wing. Okay, so maksudnya scale kat sini is putih, scale kat sini hitam. So, kalau tertanggal scale ni and then you will see different type of color which is dull. Macam kelabu je kan, tak nampak apa because of the scale tu dah hilang. Okay, so this is the characteristic for papillonid. And then last order we have here is odonata. Okay, 
uh, we we only see two family which is libellulidae Lib and then another one is ashnidae so libellulidae they have pattern swing okay pattern swing not only this type of color there are also other type of color there are purples ada yang color purples, uh, ada yang a bit darker like dark brown. So ada yang totally highlight, maksudnya tak ada color langsung juga ada. But most of it has a, we consider it as a pattern wing. And also distinctive color on the thorax and abdomen. Where, okay, for this one, thorax and abdomen, dia ada color um, uh, reddish. But there are also, uh, uh, apa? There, there are also uh, individual yang dia punya color on the body or, or on the tracks and the abdomen is actually different from the one uh, yang maksudnya uh, badan dia mungkin you see color merah ataupun mungkin sekerat abdomen sahaja color merah but uh, 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 thorax mungkin ada color lain okay so two adalah what we call it here, pattern wing and distinct color on the thorax and abdomen. Cumanya contoh dalam ni, this is a neurotherm, neurotermis, uh, I think neurotermis tulia, if I'm not mistaken, but it's neurotermis. Okay, so dia ada color merah macam ni. Okay, different species, you can see that the punya expansion of color merah ni is totally different. Ada yang sedikit je merah kat sini, ada yang a bit uh, larger. So, tu juga menentukan dia punya characteristic of the uh, at, uh, family and genus as well. Okay. So, color or distinct color on the wing and body. And then, um, they also can be recognized by notch of the posterior margin of the eyes. A notch of posterior margin of the eyes where, uh, yang ni tak nampak sangat because uh, dia sebelah je. Uh, but it's actually somewhere here, there is a uh, separated between eyes sebelah ni dengan sebelah sana. Okay, uh, for different family, ada yang dia punya eyes tu, maksudnya dia macam seolah-olah bercantum dua, kiri dan kanan as well. So, uh, that that is also the characteristic that we have to look for bila kita dapat sample of odonata which is dragonfly. And then for this libellulid family, okay, they have anal loop. Anal loop is actually loop, uh, a part on the hind wing here, like I highlighted here. Okay, ni saya highlight color biru. This is what we call it, anal loop. It's actually foot shape. Dia seolah-olah macam bentuk macam kaki lah if you see. Uh, it's not actually kaki or stokin tapi it has that kind of shape. Okay, ni sama juga yang contoh gambar kat bawah. Okay, this is the part where we call it analu. And this part only appear on libellulid. Okay, this is the characteristic of libellulid. And other than that, they have membranous hind and forewing. Okay, which is uh, forewing, hindwing ni mungkin almost similar uh, uh, in size. Sometimes uh, a bit shorter lah compared to forewings but it's broader than forewings. And then the punya abdomen here is very slender. Kan nampak macam kurus, tirus je. So it's very slender. And then uh, uh, what are things? Okay, the the compound eyes is very lush. And the antenna, okay, you cannot really see the antenna here. It's just a, kalau kamu tengok betul-betul here, kamu nampak dia macam a bit bulu, right? Macam halus bulu satu kat sini yang ambil tiga. Okay. This is what we call it cetaceous, cetaceous antenna. Okay, dia macam just satu site. Cumanya dia still ada scape and pedicel tu lah. Part yang kita belajar dari segmen-segmen scape pedicel tu, they still have that one. Cuma dia seolah-olah dia macam bentuk halus, macam rambut je. So, we call it cetaceous. And this antenna is actually on the uh, found on the odonata. Okay, then not very much clear. Cumanya dia macam rambut a bit thicker here. Very short. Okay, so this is the lipolulid. And last one we have ashnide. Okay, the size compared to lipolulid uh, a bit bigger. Okay, and in fact uh, the biggest odonata 
is actually come from this family. Okay, we have here in Malaysia, Tetra, Kanta, Jaina, Lajiata, which is the largest uh, uh, Odonata, uh, uh, kira largest Odonata alive lah here today from Ashnide punya group. Okay, and then um, the characteristic mostly are colored blue or green. So you can imagine the punya body here, bukan color sayap tau, most of the sayap usually uh, tak ada color blue for this kind of Ashnide. Cumanya body is actually very distinct with blue and green color. So kadang you only see, uh, you see this pattern like this kan, biru dekat setiap segment ni. Sometimes you only see biru dekat this part sahaja, abdomen but this part enlarged abdomen sahaja. So it's very, the, the patterns on the body is actually the main characteristic to distinguish their species as well. Okay, so this uh, the punya kaki as you can see uh, with bristles. Okay, there are banyak bulu-bulu halus bristles. And this is the antenna, sama juga cetaceous. Okay, and here like I said, the punya mata kanan dan mata kiri is actually mixed together atau bersambung kat tengah ni. So it's just a separate by thin, thin line. Okay, dia tak ada uh, it's not, it's actually separated. Cumanya dia macam ada satu lurah halus sahaja yang separatekan mata kiri dan kanan. So the eyes or compound eyes is very large. And here uh, the the wing is full uh, transparent, fully transparent as you can see. And, and the venation also very complicated as you can see there are banyak venation, banyak cells inside and then uh, sama juga lah tadi, tadi dia punya body or abdomen is slender and then uh, for the mouth part maybe you cannot see here but as you all know that odonata is actually predators so once predators they equip with strong mandible. So kalau kamu buka kat bawah, kalau tengok kat bawah, they have a mouth pipe which is strong mandible. And then um, also how to say uh, it's actually oriented downward. Uh, mulut dia tu kedudukan dia adalah mengarap ke bawah. Okay so this is the characteristic that we, we can use to describe Ashni Day. Okay sometimes um, for the complicated or for the fully, uh, let's say if you want to uh, to identify into species, sometimes we also need to count number of cell here. Okay, kan satu dua kotak-kotak ni, we call it cell. Okay, sometimes we also need to count number of cell to, to uh, identify which a genus or which, which species uh, this Odonata com, come from, even though from the same family. Okay, so it's very uh, complicated lah juga to identify uh, this into the species. Okay, so that's all. Uh, any question you want to ask? Tak ada? Okay. Okay, semua orang okay. I hope so because uh, uh, you have to fully understand how to describe certain uh, organism, how to describe the characteristic of organism lah. Uh, sebabnya that, that is the purpose of our class actually, to learn and uh, uh, about the pest. Tapi macam mana nak identify pest and insect tu based on dia punya characteristic. Okay, so uh, anyone can guess a uh, second picture ni apa benda? This one of course you can see obviously this is a, a monash butterfly. Okay, but second one, what is this? Dragonfly ke? Yes, it's actually dragonfly. So this is dragonfly that image 
uh, from the uh, dia punya uh, uh, name here. This is the name that actually live underwater but now of course dia dah jadi exuvia lah. This uh, what we call exuvia adalah uh, bila dia mok, dia, dia salin kulit. Okay, bila dia having a disease, pertukaran kulit and then they have uh, bahan tinggalan, we call it as a exuvia. And this is the, the the one that come out which is adult. Okay, so adult ni kamu nampak dia tak ada rupa macam dragonfly lagi kan because uh, it will take time, sometimes about a day so uh, for for them to fully, I mean fully enlarge so macam mana dia enlarge dia punya sayap, sayap and so on nampak sayap dia masih tergulung kan by taking uh, air maksudnya dia sedut udara so that dia macam pump ke seluruh badan dia so that dia menggelembung and then jadilah struktur uh, the final structure, final size yang dia nak. So that's how uh, egg disease work ataupun molting work. Okay, salin kulit. Sama jugalah macam kalau dia salin dari nympha first stage nympha ke second stage nympha sama juga macam dia uh, molt dari uh, first larva ke second stage larva because uh, as you see uh, insects or any of not just insect, many arthropod, okay, they have, uh, remember I said they have exoskeleton, okay, and exoskeleton which is very hard, okay, and then it's made from uh, chitin, so it cannot grow, dia tak boleh membesar, dia tak boleh enlarge, katalah kalau size tu adalah dia punya size larvae tu uh, panjang 1 cm, so it cannot grow more than 1 cm. So macam mana dia nak grow more than 1 cm, dia kena buang dia punya kulit asal. Okay, so that's how we said that this is atau molting process. Bila dia buang kulit asal and they come out with a new uh, skin sebelum salin kulit tu, dia dah ada skin kat dalam lah maksudnya. Okay, cumanya skin tu is not very hardened. Uh, the the chitin or the part is not hardened. So they will going through the process what we call it as sclerotization. I'm not sure whether you can you remember ke tak. Proses di mana dia keraskan kulit dia. Okay, waktu tu lah juga dia macam okay, kembangkan dia punya badan sampai maksimum, kembangkan dia punya sayap and then keras. So it will take a few, uh, depending on the species, it will take a few minutes more, sometimes uh, about a days just untuk keraskan ataupun uh, uh, reach the maximum or the maximum size of the, the insect lah. Maksudnya dia mengembang betul-betul dah nak rupa dragonfly. Tapi waktu dia keluar ni of course dia bentuk macam very ugly. Tak ada bentuk like dragonfly lah. Sebab waktu ni dia still perlu proses untuk kembangkan badan seduk udara, pam ke seluruh badan. Okay, so this is the how the process work. Otherwise, dia tak boleh uh, berkembang. Dia tak boleh uh, develop atau membesar. Okay, so uh, that's all. Uh, I will end. Uh,